Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo 100k run on this week's Nightfall. It is on the 1550 and it is the new Nightfall, the Light Blade, which is a kind of play on a D1 strike called the Dark Blade. It's the same character a la Kill, but now he's been imbued with the light. I'm doing it on Night Stalker. You can see all my aspects and fragments here. Uh, I really want to talk about my choice of energy weapon. I'm using Hung Jury Adept as my primary, and I'm using Sub Zero Salvo Rocket Launcher as my heavy. But I'm using the new Arc Glaive, the Edge of Concurrence. The reason I wanted to use this was to kind of show off the differences between that and maybe the Enigma. I don't use the exotic uh, perk in it, the exotic trait. And I'll explain during the run why I didn't use that. But it's a really good glaive, faster fire rate than the Enigma, and it actually fires arc, obviously, because it's an arc glaive. I'll speak a little bit about how to get it during the run as well, but that's not really the main point of it. I'm sure other people have done it better than I have. I've got some good finishers that work with it. Uh, obviously, I've got Suppressant Glaive, Unstoppable Glaive. I've got Lucent Finisher which uh, anytime I finish a champion or a lucent uh, hive, uh, a, a light bit, a bit wielding hive, I get heavy. So when you first come into a strike, you're going to have LL Cool J, as I, I used to refer to him. Uh, you're going to have the big boy over by the, the doorway. A couple of rockets on him will make him... He'll, he'll, he'll just go. I was going to say something else there, but I've got to keep it clean. Uh... <laughs> He, he'll just run. In this area, you've got two Arc Shielded Knights and you've got two Barrier Knights. You see there's one there. So what we're going to try and do as best as possible is get rid of the barriers. So I'm obviously going to want to finish them. The One of the good things about the, 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 the Edge of Concurrence, the new Glaive, one of the cool things about it is its fire rate on its energy shots. You can see there it's pretty rapid fire. It's very fast. Now, why didn't I use the exotic trait? Well, it's it's slightly underwhelming, if I'm being honest. There is a place for it, but I don't know if it's an end game. So once you've had six energy kills, reload, and then hold the reload button, and you will switch fire fire mode. And what will happen is, you basically will get uh, something like the Risk Runner or uh, the Arc Exotic Bow, uh, the Trinity Ghoul, where you'll chain lightning. Now, it's really difficult to tell whether it's any good because the, the visual effect of it is so underwhelming. It's 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 like you don't really see uh, any kind of chained lightning. What you see is a bunch of ads that fall over. So I, I, I haven't tested it on enough large groups of ads to tell you how efficient it is. But... Because we've got this uh, acute burn, and that, that it's arc on this this uh, this this nightfall, so we take fifty percent more arc damage, but we deal twenty five percent more. I figured, what better time to use the arc uh, the arc glaive than when it's going to do twenty five percent more damage and suppress ads. Now there are about hmm, six solar shields in this whole strike. But a well-placed rocket or the energy firing ability on the glaive, which will also suppress them, there's one of them. The rocket will finish them. So, so because I'm using, uh, I normally don't like to use weapons that people don't already have. But I figured I would kind of, you know, give people a chance to see this because I'm not sure this has been out there too often. You get it from uh, the board, the evidence board, doing the quest on the evidence board, and by far the hardest part of that, I think, so far, is uh, farming the weapons from the Wellspring, which, I have to tell you, it took me three hours to get my second uh, testable Tarnation grenade launcher. So, grind is done now, and because, because I've got it, I think now because I've got it, I can I, I once I get the materials, I can make them all now. Now, the glaive, with its suppressing capabilities, will suppress uh, these these uh, light-wielding, these lucent hive. It will suppress them out of their abilities, which is good. Uh, with the modifiers I've got and with the perks I've got, when I when I uh, suppress an, an ad, I go invisible. Uh, cue all the, the invisible hunter haters. 
me being one of them for the greatest greatest part, but because of this acute burn, I figured most other classes you stand a chance of just getting melted, but you know before you can really get into the fight. So I decided not to do that, just just to do it like this. I've come up here because as soon as we kill one more enemy, we're going to spawn the next Lucent Lucent uh, Hyvin. It's a light blade warrior. Uh, so what I've done is just suppress them. And then hit him with a rocket and then a couple of more suppressions and he was dead. And now there's a, a bunch of these thrall. Now you will notice the thrall are invisible because one of the modifiers is some of the ads will remain invisible until they're close to you. In this strike, it's nearly always a thrall that are invisible. Which is great fun since as at the boss there are a heap of exploders. Yes, they will be invisible. There's what Ark... Uh, there's what Ark Knights, and there's another Lucent Hive, and a whole host of of Thrall, which the the Glaive will sort them out. We'll just take him with the rocket, and there's another. I tried to take him with the rocket, and I'll tell you why. I tried to take him with the rocket because I've been doing this a few times. I've maybe done about six or seven runs. I've beat this a few times. Six or seven runs, and I seem to run out of glaive ammo a lot faster than rocket ammo. So if I can, I can see I have bricks on the floor, as you can see. Uh, I decided to try and take whatever I could out, especially the heavier ads with the rocket launcher. So now we're going to be heading towards the ship section. And the thing about the sh ship section is, there's a bunch of uh, wizards, there's a bunch of shriekers. Once you get past the very start. The very start, we're going to have two more Lucent uh, Light Bearers. So, the idea is, you take out the Lucent... At the start, you're going to have two barriers right here, one left, one right. And then once we get on the ship, we're going to get so far, and then we're going to have Light Bearers. Uh, what I like to do is take out these, obviously take out the barriers, and then finish them so I replenish whatever rockets I, I, I used. You don't have to because it's not really needed. Once you finish this guy, you could probably just take the other one uh, with rockets and just, just kill him. But it was just a routine I got into. was trying to make sure I was stocked up on rockets at all times. Because I'm invisible, he probably won't dodge the rocket. If he sees you fire it, he'll dodge it. And it's a nightmare because because the, the, the glaive is kind of... Uh, I, w I wouldn't say rare, but there aren't a ton of people with it, I don't think, uh, at the moment. Uh, I'd, I'd say to couple it with a weaker rocket launcher. I could have went with something a bit different, uh, but uh, I decided to go with this just to... Because as you guys know, I normally don't use weapons I don't think people have, you know, don't have access to. But I chose this, as I've already said, A, just to show off to show off its capabilities so you guys can see uh, if, it's, if it's your cup of tea, really. But also, uh, I decided to use it because, as I say, ton of arc, but it's, it's, it's not, this is a different proposition. This isn't, uh, this isn't a raid weapon. You know, if it had been a raid weapon, that's it's stuff like that. I'd like to, I don't like to use because not everybody has access to do regular raids. So I kind of feel like it's how do you make it? You know, shouldn't really be making a guide with stuff that people can't use because they, they you know, they don't do those act. They don't have access to those activities for whatever reason. Uh, when you get to this section, these two lucent hive. My suggestion, take out both of them. Take out both of them before you, you do any kind of slamming of any orbs. The reason why is the very first time I came in here, I, uh, I killed the one on the other side, done exactly what I've just done here, finished his ghost, picked up the orb, went down to slam it, and the, the knight on the other side popped his super and killed me as I was slamming. I, I decided that was never going to happen again. So take out both of them, and then you're just it's, it's it's a free and easy run just to slam both orbs. 
I said, uh, and if I haven't said, then I must have said it in my head, that the Sub-Zero Salvo isn't a great rocket launcher. The reason why I'm saying that, because it's it's not exactly as if it's really bad. The reason why I'm saying that is because we've got so many better ones. You know, the Galahome, for example, uh, which is, it, it is my... And I said this, it's not like I'm jumping on any hype train or anything. I said when it came back into the game, you guys were going to have to get used to nearly every video of the Galahorn in it. Because it was my my weapon, It was I think it was first or second exotic I got in Destiny 1. I have a lot of memories of, of the Galahorn. A lot of, you know, it literally, I have, I could have... If snipers were better and we didn't need to use other weapons, then I could have my Destiny 1 loadout, which would be Fatebringer, uh, Thousand Yard Stare, and Galahorn. It actually was the Palindrome, but they made the Palindrome an energy weapon, so I can't have those. But I, d I did used to use uh, the Fatebringer a whole heap as well. So I could just run Fatebringer, and it would be very close to my D1 loadout. Why would I want to run a D1 loadout when we're playing D2? Nostalgia, baby. That's why I'd like to run it. Uh, and and to, almost, I could I could pretty much say I almost beat every Nightfall, scored Nightfall with that loadout in Destiny 1. Simpler times. I, I'm not sure I would go back to that, but, you know, definitely for the nostalgia, you know, very good. The reason why I'm turning around and killing those guys, obviously it's a 1550. I think I might have said 1350. You guys know I don't mean 1350. It's 1550, all right? I keep getting put up by my clan for saying, oh yeah, it's 1380 for the master. And they're like, that sounds really easy. Uh, and the reason I turn around to kill those guys is a score. Just to make sure that I'm not going to be, you know, really hustling for score in the boss room. But at the same time, uh, as I did, I'll be putting, the next video I'll be putting up, and I'll be putting it up maybe a couple hours after this one. It's, it's done. I just need to do the commentary, which I'll do straight after I finish this. Uh, the time story mission, the heroic story mission for the 100k. Uh, there are certain parts as it's, uh, related to what I was meaning here. There are certain parts you can just run past because it's more efficient rather than spend four, four or five minutes killing eight ads. Run past it to get an extra four or five minutes with heavy duty ads at the boss. So it's all about uh, managing your, your, your time and... You know, making sure you're being efficient with your point scoring. So as you can see here, and most of you all know this because this mission was part of the story. Uh, this is the part that annoys people because these moths. It annoys me because of the moths. But what I've decided to do is just completely uh, uh, ignore the mechanics, which is those kind of two kind of pillars that you can go through. They, I think they activate the lanterns. You get lanterns for going through them, and the lanterns take your your uh, weight of darkness off you. It's very it's very crota esque mechanics. I decided not to do that because I had access to to invisibility, and uh, once I get the invis, I mean, with that, I'm getting 11, 12 seconds of, of invis, and I've also got a dodge to give me seven or eight seconds of invis. So I'm just, I've got full weight of darkness on, so I can't i can't move very quickly at all. I think I've got eight mobility. Uh, and with these shots, I will eventually make myself invis from them. And that gives me time to get past the moths, move further up. My dodge gives me a touch, you'll see, a touch of forward momentum. Let's see if we can get another invis out of there we go. I've got my dodge. Um, I kind of saved my dodge here for as, as long as I can because, I, because I'm invis and I'm not, I'm just bunny hopping, I'm not bush jumping, so I'm not attracting any of the ads' attention through jumping because ads in this game are, are activated by audio. So bush jumping will activate ads. And there we go. It's very simple. Very simple doing it like that. So here we've got an unstoppable. I think this might be our first unstoppable. There is only two unstoppables in this that I can think of. It's all barrier. The unstoppable is on the other side of the rock. You can see him with with the wall hacks. There he is to the left. I'm going to take out these guys here 
Uh, I'm gonna take them out first, I'm, and then and then I'm gonna see if I can take out some of these, uh, some of these raiders up top, some of these scorn. Take out a couple of these goddamn exploding moths, man. And because they're arc, one of them will take half to three quarters of your health. So now we've took enough, we'll stop, stop the the ogre. Just put, we don't want to kill him, we just want to get him as low as we can. There we go. Now what we're going to do is see if we can take any more of these raiders up top. There we go, stalkers, sorry. They are stalkers, those ones. So now, stop him again and we can run over. Lucent finisher, finish him, get a brick of heavy. And we went invisible. Now, I kind of, I nearly messed up here. I didn't mess up, but I nearly did. Because I went for him and he went invisible for a lot longer than I thought he was going to. So I had to dodge to go invis. And now we'll just finish these guys off. Now, this is us just about at the boss. So at the boss, before the boss, just below us, you're going to have two big gatekeeper ogres, two, two kind of abominations and an unstoppable, and the boss is going to be overseeing all the action, as you can see that massive stream of arc, which will leave you, you know, there's there's no getting away from that. There's a couple of ads down there. I'm just going to try and get some shots. Now, the good thing about this is, now we don't want to waste a lot of time, but the good thing about this is, these ads will attack each other. So as long as you get hits on them, if one ad kills another one, you'll get credited with the points because you've done damage. But I've, I haven't got a lot of rockets. I would like a bit more before I get to the boss, obviously. So I'm not just going to burn rockets on trying to kill these two uh, gravekeepers, these blighted gravekeepers. Bungie with their names, man. I thought they were called gatekeepers because well, that, that makes more sense, right? gatekeepers because they're stopping us going in. Anyway, you know, drop me a postcard, Bungie. I'm always available for renaming purposes. <laughs> drop me an email. I'm free. Uh, yeah, so we're just going to stay up here. We're going to take these uh, gravekeepers out. And as I say, I don't want to burn too much heavy. As I, I know I've only got one more, but in my mind, I've got one, one way to get uh, heavy, which is this unstoppable ogre. That's that's my only predictable way of getting heavy. So I'm gonna put this last rocket on on LL, and then we're just gonna whittle him down with the scout because do I think it's like ten percent of his health or something, and then he runs, turns tail, sprints. Uh. And then we'll go down. There's still two Shriekers and a couple of little lads up, up on the platform. The light blade's on now. As you can see just to the left of where I'm shooting. Well, quite far over to the left is a Shrieker. Sitting right next to the the hanging plant pot thing. Uh, and there's one to the right of him as well. There he goes. So now I'm going to go down. I'm just going to dodge. Get my invis. Go down. And it turned out when I came down, I had a couple of bricks of heavy line about. Which was cool. So now, I was like, Where, where's this ogre? And because of where I am, I activated the Shriekers. So we've moved over. I'm just going to wait to get health regen back. And then we're going to find the ogre. There he is. Now, as I say, the audio activated. So if he hadn't have come to me, I'd have just bush jumped. And he'd have went, oh, there you are. And he'd have come charging. It's like when you're running past enemies or you're running out in the wild, you can test it yourself. If you don't bush jump and you run past some enemies, maybe one or two of them will shoot you, bush jump, and everybody will start shooting you. So it's not like the ads won't see you if you don't bush jump, you just don't activate as many of them. If like this, the Shrieker doesn't open for you, just shoot it and it will open. I'll go and get this brick of heavy, and as I say, there's a couple of ads up top, and then we're on to the boss. If you need to, go and vis when you're going up here, you don't, you don't have to Strong arm it and just I can survive this. Just go and viz and then heat them up with the the glaive. So remember to bush jump before you hit the ground because I don't understand that. It looks like a portal. It looks like 
something similar. We had a number of times in Destiny where you jump in and it slows you before you hit the ground. Uh-uh, not here. So what we're going to try and do, boss is going to unleash his business and then he's going to come up. And then what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to throw that actually because there's an absolute mountain of throw. And then we're going to pop our super. Unfortunately, a bit of my super hit that pot. You see there, we're still doing good damage and then get another rocket off. And I'll try and get another one. There we go. He's very close to being uh, ready, ready to go. And you see all those invisibles on the ground. 99% of any invisibles you're going to see on the ground are going to be exploding thralls. So be very careful. I'm just coming down here. There'll be, there, there was probably more. Uh, there was probably more, but uh, probably more of those orbs of light, but I didn't want a chance. And plus, we're getting kills and stuff. There we go. Hopefully, that'll build, help build our supper up. So now we're going to get two arc shielded knights. We're going to get a lucent, a lucent hive. Uh, uh, you can see him coming over there. He suppressed me already, so I suppress him straight back. To which, once he's suppressed, he jumps back, which is very, very considerate of him. So now we've got to wait for the suppression to wear off and for them to come back over. There's an arc knight, and that's one of them down. There is another one. As I say, we want to suppress him. There's the, there's the light guy. So we're, we're going to suppress. The Arc Knight, then we'll suppress him, and then we can fart, get a bit of, get a bit of heavy from him. Remember, grab his ghost, and the Arc Knight. Once he sees that we're 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 all back over here, he'll come over. Now, next time you activate the boss, which is going to be right now, you're also going to get two barriers. See there. Now, what I possibly could have done here is I possibly could have took one of the barriers straight away, but I didn't want to take the chance. As I've already said, that arc damage, the boss's arc damage, is insane. Big, just massive, that massive stream of arc. So we'll just throw a, a, a rocket down here and take out those. And we've got more, more ads incoming. Now, this guy, I think, dropped a brick of heavy. Which you'll see, I'm actually looking for heavy and I'll run past it. Got plenty of special. Now, I'm wanting to fire my super. I've got a couple of rockets. So, you see how I jumped and I activated them. So, when you're popping your super like this, especially when he's in this phase, make sure you're moving backwards. Because if you're not, he, 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 he has a tendency. To push you really hard. And like like this, if you're moving from area to area, these kind of alcoves, you can like do big bush jumps over over the openings because there's they they come down a bit. The tops of them, there's cover above it. So if you're jumping up high uh, and not just running past the opening sections like that, if you double double boost up over there, there's cover. So you can't really get hit. Uh, boss is targeting us. So I think what I try and do here, that was a waste of a rocket and I nearly died from it as well. Uh, what I try and do, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get the boss a bit lower because then he'll go into his kind of cocoon state. He'll move back into the middle and then I'll get the two arc shielded knights and the lucent hive. I can then take a lucent hive. I can take one of the arc shielded hive and then suppress the other one while I take the champions. You know, because until you take both the knights and the Lucent Hive, the the Alakul will stay in his immune state. I call it cocoon state, but you know what I mean, where he's protected. Uh, so, again, this is going to be kind of our last, you know, once, once, once we get him into his... Uh, final state right and he gets more aggressive it seems with each each dps phase so we need to put a couple more on him but you'll see here fire a rocket at this guy and i think he dodged and went straight off the platform so now i've got no heavy i think there is a brick of heavy waiting for me 
along here, but I've got no heavy and uh, two champions and the boss. Unfortunately, my grenade went off, off the, hit the wall, went off the platform. So now what we need, we need to get a brick of heavy and we need to take these champions. I'm just looking to see locations of everything. Using these pillars to block the boss's shots. And there's what brick of heavy. He's, I'll go invis, go and get that brick. And now I can start taking the champions out. Now I'll take these barriers out, but I'm not going to bother with the next set. Now what happens is I'm going to put a rocket on the boss because I really need to get him out of here. Once we find the boss, I'm going to put a rocket on this champion. I think the boss is over to the right. There he is. So I'm going to get rid of this champion. The other champion I get rid of actually pretty simply. It's uh, I suppress him with my grenade. I suppress him with a grenade, and the grenade does an absolute ton of damage to what I thought it would. So we'll just get Remviz there, which starts health regen, because obviously the glaive counts as a melee. So we'll put a rocket on him. I've got a few rockets. Unfortunately, I have got a few rockets, but it seemed like ev not everyone I fired actually either done direct impact or yeah, that's, that, that was a good hit this one I think he just moved behind that plant pot thing behind him so we're, getting, we're running around here just to stay mobile you can see there I was just taking so much damage and then we're going to run into over the other side we're going to run into the champion again more than likely So we don't know whether we don't know which way to go now. So I've got my super, and what I'm going to do here, you see here how much damage this does. This surprised me. So now I can I can get heavy because we can finish this champion. And for luckily for us, we took the champion, and the boss went. Nah, I'm not having any of that. <laughs> Let's go. I'm off. Got a good hit on him there. He's almost ready to go. I'm going to save this last rocket. Try and get one hit on him, which is all we're going to need. Now he's going to go into his immune state, which means we're going to get... Now, that was a mistake. Firing that rocket there was a mistake. Although, almost killed one of them. Now he's dead. You can see he's dead. So we've suppressed him. Now we've got suppressed. So what we're going to have to do is move back... Now we've got the, the light bearer. See there, I'm throwing his sentinel shield. Dodge, go in, Viz. I'm going to find him. There he is over at the back. So what I'm going to do is if I suppress him with the glaive, it brings him out of his super. And then I can suppress the other knight. Now what I could have done, if there were still champions up, is I could have got rid of the boss, put him into the center. And you'll see here, we take out this... this, this uh, we, took, we take out the light-bearing uh, knight, and the boss didn't become active straight away. Because you've got to take... You've got to take the... You've got to take both of the arc-shielded knights, put a rocket on them, dodge. And you see there, the, when the rocket hits, it, 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 it hits them for a fair bit. So I've got two rockets here. Again, I had the problem, maybe, maybe it was velocity. Maybe that this rocket doesn't have great velocity. So we can't really go after him there. So it's, again, I, f I feel like, I feel like the way to go, ha just watching this back, because obviously this is, I'm doing this in post. Uh, the, way, the way to go would be, just put that rocket on him. Happen for quite a bit. The way to go would be to move over the other side of the map each time. And put one more on him. It was a good hit. So one more rocket does the job. And nearly died there. Got 
dodge, get the invis, we'll take care of this guy. As I say, the fire rate on the, 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 the arc glaive is really good. Now I think that there's a there's a brick of heavy line against one of the pillars. There it is to the left. I look straight at it, don't see it, and then run away. I think that's the brick that I pick up that actually kills the boss. So we'll get out of here. Now I shouldn't have turned back because I, that was a mistake. When you dodge and you go invis, get out of there. As you can see, I never got, I got my invis and then fired at him and almost died. You get the invis, move into position, move away from where you are. Because the even if the boss can't see you because you're invis, he'll just fire at the last place he's seen you. So if you're if you stay in the same place, then you're asking for trouble. So now I'm going to try and find him and hit him with this rocket. Where is he? I think he's down to. I think he cut appears at the right. There we go. And there we go. That is the run. So shock and all move. Get shots on them when you can. Uh, when you do go invis, make sure you move away from the position you went invisible at. And just keep moving about. If you want to take both the champions, it's an idea to get the boss down first. Get the two Arc Shielded Knights and the Lucent Hive out. Kill the Lucent Hive. Kill one of the Arc Shielded Knights and suppress the other one while you take your champions. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope this helps. I hope you enjoyed the run. I hope you enjoyed watching the new Glaive. And until the next video, take it easy, and I will see you then.